Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Machine Dana and you're probably here because you're having trouble setting up media sharing on your Streamlabs OBS software. Um, it's a little bit of a minefield this. Uh, Streamlabs tutorials themselves are out of date. There's a lot of navigation that's changed. Widgets, URLs have changed. The location of buttons and settings has changed. The layouts. There's a lot of stuff that's changed and I've really struggled to find an up-to-date tutorial, which to be honest, even though I don't really do many software-based tutorial videos, has prompted me to do a tutorial video just to help people out a little bit. If you find this useful and you want to see more videos from Machine Dana, by all means click subscribe, but at least if you find this useful, do thumbs up the video because it will help other people to locate the video as well. So in this video, I'm only going to be concerned with locating and setting up media sharing on your Streamlabs OBS software. Now bear in mind this, there are two things I'll be going through. One is free media sharing, which is based on commands that you put into the chat or viewers would put into the chat and the settings for that. There is also a second way of doing media sharing, which is more donations based media sharing. So users have to donate a certain amount or different amounts to be able to share media on your stream and obviously all the settings to go through that and also applying that to your stream as well so without further ado let's get into it okay first of all the assumption i'm going to make at this point is that you have probably already got a stream labs account set up if you haven't you need to visit streamlabs.com and set up a stream labs account i think you may already have to have done that to download and install and use Streamlabs, but perhaps not, I'm not sure. Um, I'm assuming at this point also that you may have also done some streaming already and that actually you're looking now at this point to enhance and improve your stream by adding media sharing as an interactive tool for your viewers. Okay, so, but if you haven't, again, on streamlabs.com forward slash dashboard, you're able to look at download Streamlabs OBS will allow you to install the most recent version of Streamlabs. However, this, this video does assume you've got some experience with Streamlabs, but otherwise you, you, you probably shouldn't be setting up media sharing just yet. I would probably do that as a step two or three on your stream. You're trying to run before you can walk if you're setting up media share before you even streamed a single time. I've only been streaming, believe it or not, for 50 or 60 days and I've, I've made a lot of improvements and most recently wanted to add media sharing to my stream. And I, you know, I literally found that there was very little up-to-date information about this. So this is why I'm doing the tutorial. The two types of media sharing that you can set up, the free version is located on CloudBot. Now you can search for CloudBot here, or it may be in the dashboard here, or there may be, by the time you see this video, another way of navigating to CloudBot. CloudBot is the standard, most recent version of the automatic bot that allows you to do loads of different stuff on your Streamlabs uh, stream, uh, on your software. It integrates really, really well with Twitch, uh, Mixer, as was, as re recently been sold to Facebook. Uh, and various others. What Streamlabs CloudBot allows you to do is set up different commands, timers, quoting systems, polls, giveaways, betting, user management, all kinds of different stuff. What we're concerned with today is CloudBot modules and we want media sharing, okay? We need to turn this on. This toggle here will literally switch that on. Now, first of all, you do need to ensure you've got CloudBot turned on with this toggle here. If you're troubleshooting why it's not working, make sure the toggle is on for CloudBot. You also needed to have gone to your stream and done forward slash mod Streamlabs. Okay, you have to have done that process first. So assuming you've done those things on your stream, you'll now be in a position where you can use uh, CloudBot and it's authorized. CloudBot is authorized to do things on your channel. I'm not going to be going into the detail on how to set CloudBot up because that's a totally different video and it would make this video a lot longer. I'm assuming at this point you may already have CloudBot. If you want to do the free media sharing, you have to have CloudBot on Streamlabs. So media sharing, what this does, when this to is toggled on, you can now, users and viewers can now put exclamation mark request, followed by a space, followed by a YouTube URL, and they will make a request in chat for a video. Now there are some caveats to this. There are some kind of, provisos that viewers need to have uh, been through at this point so you may also want to set up a separate command called something like i don't know a command um media 
sharing uh, guide or something like that, which gives some information about the media sharing on your channel. Um, but what you need to do here is go into media sharing, click the preferences, and here is where you set up the free media sharing requests for your viewers. Now, this is not anything to do with the media sharing for content, which is donations based media sharing, which is we'll go into that in a, a little bit later on in the video. So what you can do here, first of all, you're able to set the queue limit. So the number of media that is in the queue. Obviously, if you've got a one hour stream and you've allowed this to be 600 pieces of media, it's a little bit un unrealistic. Um, the maximum duration of the media itself that you're going to allow people to. So this just to be really clear on this setting, because it's quite an important one. It seems obvious this will this will not allow users to request videos above 120 seconds. Uh, and just to prove this at the moment, this is 121 seconds. I'm going to this video here is two minutes and 12 seconds. That's 132 seconds. It's above the limit. OK, now I already know that I've got this set up on my stream and it's already set to be 120. If I make a request by going into the request channel space with the URL, hopefully that tells me the maximum allowed duration is 120 seconds. But again, you can also set up a command that gives gives your uh, viewers guidance about that. I'm just going to refresh that because I'm going to do another command in there in a second. So you may want to consider doing this to something a little bit more um, higher in duration. You can also have re maximum requests per user, votes required so other users can skip the media, uh, limit requests to music only. So you might only want music requests, you might not want movies playing on your stream or whatever. I don't know what bizarre people, things people decide they want to do sometimes. Now there's also this spam security. This spam security setting does apply to also the paid donations based media, but there is a separate setting for that. So it's basically the same setting though. Uh, all this does, the spam security set at level one, two, three, four, which is level low, medium, high, and very high. So one, two, three, and four. Low gives you a 65% rating minimum required rating of the YouTube video. So that uses basically thumbs up and thumbs down data to determine how good the quality of the video is based on the user feedback of YouTube. Uh, and the video also needs to have at least 5,000 views on the video before this level one will allow the video link to be requested. And just to put that into perspective, I, this is already set to one on my stream. This particular video here, Aries theme tune from Final Fantasy 7, hopefully your Final Fantasy 7 fans. This is where everyone tunes out of the video. <laughs> this has only got 918 views. Not sure about the votes. It has got enough upvotes. 12 to 2 is above 65% ratio. I'm just going to go and request that video. So my bot tells me that the theme tune does not have enough views. So it's not hit the view limit to be able to pass the spam limit on the settings. So you've got to be careful with these in mind. So I've set that to be 180. I'm going to save that to update it. You can set your spam security to be whatever you would prefer it to be. To be honest, most videos above 75% and with the 40,000 views are going to be half decent quality videos. Uh, the community on YouTube is pretty good at feeding back on poor quality videos and, 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 and clickbaity videos. So that now that that's saved, so once again, Cloudbot, Modules and Media Share, these requests now that this is toggled and Cloudbot is toggled, you can have those media requests live on your stream. They will work, okay? And I think if someone makes a request when you're not live, I think those requests will still queue up in your stream, but we can test that later anyway. But it will certainly work when they're live. Now, people don't need to donate to make those requests, but they do have to hit the specific preferences that you've put in place, okay? so. Again, it's really important that hopefully you'll put up a Cloudbot command, add a new command with some guidance about that, or at least communicate verbally when people are asking about media sharing. So that's the free version of media sharing for Stream Labs. That's that all covered. That will work fine. And for some of you, that will be perfect. It should, it should suffice for you. So simply viewers need to type exclamation mark request with the video URL and that works. That should work absolutely fine. Now what you need to do if you want the donations based media sharing. So this would be where don't people have to donate money to you before they're allowed to share media on your stream. So it's a little bit more of a premium functionality. 
you need to go to all widgets and you need to locate media sharing widget. Another way of finding this is simply to click on media share here in the search bar. I'm sure there are two or three other ways that you can find media sharing as well. And hopefully this stays up to date. For the free version that I've just been through, you do not need to set up a widget URL within your stream labs streaming software. That's because you've already authorized CloudBot to handle that media sharing and media sharing will be handled through the CloudBot through modding Streamlabs, as I mentioned earlier. So assuming you've got all that set up, the free version should work on its own. But actually with the paid media sharing, you might want to have a widget which you can locate somewhere on your stream. You can resize it and so on and so forth. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But so, so within the all widgets and media sharing, you then get all of these settings. Now, first of all, you want to ensure that the widget itself is enabled. That just tells Streamlabs itself that you want to allow media sharing through the widget. Um, you'll then need to paste this URL here, copy it. It's a, it's got sensitive information in it, so you don't want to be sharing that to anybody. Uh, I guess it has some sort of like uh, stream key in there. And then what you need to do here is within your Streamlabs software, Okay, so I'm just first going to go ahead and right click here to to add have performance mode. That just means that you're not seeing 50 versions of my head. Christ almighty, one version is bad enough. <laughs> uh, now what we want to do here is in the specific scene that you want to have media sharing play. So where the media itself will actually play for the viewers. You want to click to plus here a browser source and then you need to paste the URL. So once you click browser source, you add source. You want to add a new browser source here. You can name that here, browser source media sharing. In fact, I might just delete that altogether. You add the source, you paste in the URL from, I'll just find that. You paste this URL here for the widget into this link here. You can then size it ma manually here or you can resize it after the fact. Uh, and there's some other settings that you might want to, to just play around with. Once you've clicked done on that, you'll have media sharing here. It will have the URL that, that links to the settings that you've also got in Streamlabs, in the Streamlabs account. I'm gonna now disable performance mode just to prove on the media sharing here, I can, so this is the standard URL that Streamlabs has because I haven't pasted my own URL in. But you can move this around and whatever, if you want media sharing right in the middle of your stream, each to their own. Me personally, I'd probably put it somewhere in the corner and resize it a bit smaller. I want to be the main star of the show, not my media. <laughs> and once you've once you've done that, and once it's viewable like this, um, this should show on your stream when people make requests, paid requests, and I'll show you how that actually takes place. Okay, so what you've done there is to install the widget URL as a browser source on your Streamlabs, um, on your Streamlabs software. For now, what you need to do is, is do all the nice stuff, which is setting how much people are going to have to pay, how long they can submit media for, spam filters, colors, and all that kind of stuff. I'll quickly run through what they are. You can have a price per second. This is currently set to 10. The default value is actually 10 cents, I think. Yeah, the default value is 10 cents. So I'll just read this out for anyone that can't see that. In order to control length, you can decide how much it costs per second to share media. Setting this to 0.30, would mean that for $10, media would play for 30 seconds. The default value is 0 0.10. So I put mine at 0 0.05, and I think what that is is the price per second is 5 cents per second. So 10 seconds would cost 50 cents, and so on. You can then have a separate subscriber price per second. So that just means anyone that is subscribed to the channel can have a separate price. You may want to charge them more. I don't think that would be a good idea, but you may want to charge them more. Depends how good or bad your subscribers are. But in most cases, you're probably going to want to charge them a lot less. Now, I did test this to see if you could give it for free, uh, but actually you can't. You do need to have at least a 0.01 uh, when people are doing donation-based media sharing on your stream. But you could have a separate value, which is lower. And that just incentivizes, incentivizes two things for your stream. First of all, it incentivizes viewers that are not subscribed to subscribe because this is another thing they can do for cheaper to interact with you and with other peers and viewers that are on the stream at the time. But what it also does is it means that people that are not subscribed to you but have the ability to chat 
and make requests can have me requests too. So they still have that functionality, but they're going to pay a lot more for it. So there's sort of push and pull factors there to push people into subscription-based models, but also it means that they're paying the price if they're not subscribing. So it's quite a nice a little additional functionality, a little button to do that. Uh, I'm going to just disable that for now. Um, minimum amount to share. So this is the US dollar value, the minimum amount a donor must donate in order to share media. And what this means is you're just preventing people from donating like 10 cents and then it takes up a, well, in this case, 180 seconds of your stream for that 10 pence media that they've donated. So I've just set that to be five. So what I'll do is I'll show exactly how these apply when a person is actually making the donation. So you can see this. And this is something that's definitely lacked on the tutorials that there are out there. I think what the tutorials have tended to do is prioritize the speed and shortness of the video by missing out really key details, which is just crazy. Uh, you can prioritize donations. So for media sharing, uh, this will be accepted media tied to a donation will take priority over non-donation media. So if there's other donations on your pages that are free, we talked about earlier, the paid donations will be prioritized in that queue. Um, so you can toggle that on or off. The buffer time between videos to allow the video itself to, to buffer. Again, we've got the spam security setting. You may want to set the spam security lower on the paid version and higher on the free request version because that just limits the number of media that's going to be playable on your free version and it also incentivizes if you look at it that way it may incentivize people to share more risky content on the media sharing if they've made a donation to your page so it's another potential uh, benefit of having a uh, a paid donation which is obviously a good thing for you as the streamer uh, particularly if you're concerned with monetizing there's a media progress bar, whether you want the progress to show um, literally a bit like this, like a, a progress of the media. And then the color of that progress bar, color of the text. Um, you can show banned media here. Um, so any videos that have been banned will show here. Quick save settings and that all those settings will apply. Now, how does this now work? And this is again, an element from the other tutorials that I've seen online. People just don't show how the paid donations the media sharing works well i'll show you that we've now set this up we've got the settings all in there we're all now about how the user themselves will make a donation to share that media we've already been through the free version of that now we're going into the paid donation version of it now what you get with streamlabs is when you upgrade to prime streamlabs prime you're able to have a website and that website's quite nice because you can apply the exact same theme that you have on your stream that you can buy and you can buy themes for your stream on Streamlabs if you're on Prime. The, the themes that you get when you're paying Prime are much better. If you see my stream, the, the sort of production quality of the overlays and things like that are much better than the average stream. And that's because I've paid for Streamlabs Prime. I'm not trying to plug it too much because um, it's not cheap. It's I think it's $120 to get Streamlabs Prime, but you do get good value from that. I, I'm speaking uh, personally here. So this is a free website that you can set up once you've had Streamlabs Prime. You can customize the URL. So I've set this particularly to be my um, my Twitch name live. I think the standard one is something like Streamlabs dot then your name forward slash whatever. Um, so it's a little bit less clean. So you can customize that, and then you can obviously add, add or remove elements and design this particular website. Now you're probably asking, well, why am I going through this? Well, first and foremost. If you're going to get Streamlabs Prime, use my affiliate code that I'll show on screen now and you can see in the description below. That means that you will get it cheaper by using my link. So it might save you, I think it's 10 or $20. Uh, but it also means that I get a kickback from that as well. So we both benefit from using that. But this isn't really about plugging it. It's purely a functional thing. So once you have that website there, the website itself, if I click on that, it looks like this. So I'm on my streaming website that's been provided by streamlabs.com uh, because I'm a prime user it's all branded you get that you can add a logo and all the other stuff but there's this donation section that you can add now this allows once you've linked your PayPal normal donations to be made without forget about media sharing you can have donations through this function which is a benefit in itself it's a clean process to allow your viewers to donate if they're enjoying your stream but when you've got media sharing turned on when you've got the widget installed, then what you've got here is this share media section. Now this does not appear if you've not turned on your widget. So now someone could say, right, here's my username. 
So obviously you can link people to this website if they want to make the donations. If I press five, I'll say enjoying the stream. Uh, and I'm gonna say as they viewer, uh, hope you enjoy this silly media that I'm sharing or whatever other cheesy thing your viewers might say to you. You're then gonna paste the video, the viewer will then paste their video URL and they can choose a start time for that video URL. Now within YouTube, I've actually already pasted a start time there. So I'll probably just delete that section there. I can have the start time at like, I don't know. I might say, I actually want this to start at, um, I don't know, five seconds in or something like that. Now, here's a cool bit. Because the settings that we've applied here have carried through, through on the widget, it's carried through to obviously your stream on Streamlabs using the widget that you've installed as a browser source, but it's also carried through to your website. So I'm donating five. Remember five is the minimum amount someone needs to donate to be able to do media sharing. I don't want people donating like 10 cents here. In fact, let's just test that. So me doing that, it's not enough. So that's showing up as red. I'm not sure. Yeah, the minimum tip is five. So that's quite good. And that's a setting that I've made to carry through. But this $5 shows that the media will play for 100 seconds. And that's based on the price per second that I set earlier. If I now put this up to $6, if I'm going to donate a bit more, I get another 20 seconds of play of my media that I'm sharing. Up to 7 seconds, 140. 8 seconds, 160. $9 gives you 180 seconds. Now, because we set the maximum amount of duration at 180 seconds, if I now put this to $10, Dollars that won't go up anymore, or twelve dollars, finger slipped, <laughs> or even a hundred dollars. That will now not change because the settings have been put in place for that. So you might just want to make your users aware of that. Although having said that, it also means that the user may not donate any more than nine dollars. So there's a few things that you may want to think about there. Again, you can choose the start time, the video URL itself, and you click donate on here. That will then queue as a donated media share on the back end, and that's literally it. I've been through tipping um, and requesting media. I've been through free media sharing and the differences between the two, how you can make one a more premium service than the other. All that's really left is you as the streamer to manage that process. So within media share, and here really is an area where the tutorials that are out there at the moment, including Streamlabs' own tutorial doesn't show this, it's out of date. It always says, oh, click on your dashboard. Well, straight away, there's no dashboard button on here, which is really bad usability. From a website point of view you can just go on streamlabs.com forward slash dashboard hashtag that will take you to your dashboard um, but to be honest the best way of doing it i find is just clicking recent events and on recent events if you've got media sharing in fact i'm not sure if this is either a default tab or it only appears once you've installed media sharing widget so if it's if this isn't appearing for you it's quite possible that it's not appearing because you've not added the widget yet so make sure you add the widget first you get this media share tab with this media share tab it will show the queued media and the pending media you can authorize things you can remove things you can preview the, the media here you can set the volume of it and there are some more options here there's a quick setting here if i just right click and open a new tab to go to the settings for the paid uh, media sharing which is the settings we've just been through uh, stopping auto play, starting, stopping auto show, and some other settings here that you might want to tweak around with and play. But this is how you, as the uh, or the moderator, can manage the media that has been queued, um, and that's it. You can then authorize them, you can cancel them, you can remove them, and all the rest of it. I think we've just about covered everything here. But if you're still struggling, please feel free to to comment below. Uh, this little subscribe button here if you want to see more but please at the very least will you like the video thumbs up so that other people can see some visibility of this video at the moment there's a lot of traffic going to out of date videos that is just really poor form for both youtube and for streamlabs and anyone else that's still got those videos live when they're not relevant anymore and by the way if this becomes irrelevant please call me out in the comments and i'll do an updated version of this video um, once again please remember to use my uh, my Prime affiliate link, which will get you money off as well if you download Prime for Streamlabs, which is, allows you to do the uh, the website, the donation website, and which then allows you to do the URLs for donated shared media uh, and the donated amounts. And hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Take it easy. Until next time.